Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. A few seconds get late getting on the air here, but what the hell? I'm Alex, and this is the Ramble. We go until midnight from New York City. That's the city you see right below you there. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown is a comedian who resides in San Francisco, California, a town that is slowly falling apart. Right, Larry. Slowly decaying. Yes, the uh, let's see. The latest to fall on Union Square. I think the last store down there is uh, Macy's is gone. So. Yeah, Macy's. Well, they're closing down most Macy's around the country. Yeah, I think they're keeping the one here in New York. I mean, if they didn't, how are we going to have the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? You know, so. well, that was a uh, quite a big store they have here. So. Oh, I remember. You know what? You know what? I built. Remember that. I remember that opening up when I was a kid. In really? Sunday when was school. that? It's like a uh, gee, uh, I, maybe maybe when I was around ten or eleven. Okay. Uh, probably in the uh, getting into the fifties, and they had the big store here in New York, and all of a sudden they announced they were going to open up a Macy's in San Francisco, and um, everybody. My mother was thrilled because my mother was from New York. Oh, we're getting a Macy's, you know, and so Macy's has been there for. You know what? Seventy years, maybe. Yeah, and they got it's great. They got they got restaurants in it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it uh, there was there were a couple of big department stores there. There was the Emporium, which was a massive department store. People have to understand there was a period of time in this country where they had these humongous department stores, and Macy's was one of them. Here in New York, Macy's is uh, how many floors high? It's about seven floors high. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. And um, there's still the wooden escalator that was there originally. For about three floors, they have it going up, and then it doesn't go up anymore. But, I mean, these were huge, massive stores. And the idea was everything you ever wanted to buy it was kind of like it was kind of like if you thought of Amazon as a department store, you know? Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Everything. And um, uh, they were big. They were huge. And in San Francisco, the Emporium was very, quite huge. There was a place called the City of Paris, uh, which I think closed a few years ago. Do you remember the City of Paris? Ever? Yeah, I never went in there, but I remember people loved that store. And I think there was a... There was an eye magnet and a Liberty House. Yep, yep. But um, the thing was that the city of Paris, what they used to have, and I don't know how they did it, but they got a huge Christmas tree. I mean, if Macy's thinks that they had a huge Christmas tree, they used to haul a huge Christmas tree into the city of Paris that went all the way to the very top where there was a glass dome, and literally the top of the tree was touching the dome. And that was about five stories high, something like that. It was incredible, just incredible. So they they had all these department stores, and people. My mother loved them, you know. She loved I Magnon. There was also J Magnon. Oh, I never heard of that one. Yeah, but I Magnon, they just closed recently, right? And they were there, I think, ever since I was born. Well, uh, yeah. Well, this, <laughs> I guess it's happening all over, but just all these. Things that were icons are disappearing. Well, they're disappearing, and it's a shame that they do, but there's no reason for them any longer. I mean, what what need do we have for a department store? You know? Um, uh, what I said, you know, we had Sears has pretty much gone out of business around the country. Right. They, they may have completely gone out. I don't know. I don't go to malls anymore, okay? But do you remember what was most important about Sears? No. The Sears catalog. And what this was was a catalog that Sears put out where everything they sold was in that book. It was a thick book every year. And people would go get them. 
and they would get the Sears catalog, and then if they needed something, they would send away for it from the Sears catalog. Well, what does that sound like? Amazon. Yeah. Uh, except it wasn't Amazon, and when Amazon came along, Sears didn't say, we already have the infrastructure to do exactly what Amazon is trying to do. Let's do it. He didn't do it. As a result, Sears has gone out, gone out of business pretty much. So. Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of fun. Like when you had stores like Tower Records, just to just go in there and browse and as you see what's in you know find weird records and stuff. It's, I kind of miss that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I used to like uh, Tower because of the really ridiculous people behind the counter who I would have to admonish now and then about saying, you know, you're not in the record business, you're selling them. <laughs> yeah, they had a real attitude. They, real attitude, like they made the records, you know. And I'd go, wow. You know, there was this uh, this actress, like Pia Zadora. Remember Pia Zadora? She was an actress, and I forget who she was married to. Married to some very wealthy guy, I don't know, either. Yeah. But anyway, she was, uh, for a time, they tr they tried to promote her. You know, she was in a movie called Butterfly and so on and so forth. And she was, y you made jokes about Pia Zadora, you know. Um, Pia Zadora, no you. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so you make jokes about Pia Zadora. One day she decided to put out an album singing. And she was phenomenal. I mean, she wasn't just, really? she wasn't just good. She was terrific. So she wasn't a hack. <laughs> she wasn't a hack when it came to singing. I said, what's she doing with these, these? She can't act, but she can sing. Why isn't she singing instead of acting? Okay? So I go over to Tower Records. I remember this. I go over to Tower Records, and <laughs> I, I go up to the guy at the counter, and I go, uh, where can I find Pia Zadora's album? And he says, you want Pia Zadora's album? I mean, with this, this snotty attitude. And that's when I said to him, I said, you're in the business of selling records, not making them, okay? Where the fuck is the record? And I bought it, and I was getting sneers as I walked out. But, you know, hey, she could sing. I wanted to support that. You know, so anyway. Uh -huh. that's, that was the, the nature of Tower Records anytime you went in there. Oh, Pia Zador. Then there's, uh, I just heard that uh, Taylor Swift, uh, you know how she got her career going? It was in country, wasn't it? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Then I can ask you the other obvious question. So who did she fuck? Uh, well, her, <laughs> apparently she had a rich father, and her first album, her father bought a million copies. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Is that true? I well, I saw it on the internet once, so it must be true. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I'll have to, I have to check that out and get back to you. Let's on check that out. But uh, I think there, and someone said someone else did that too. I don't know who it was. I mean, I'm sick of hearing about Taylor Swift. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's, so I'd like to believe your story. And she was a, I think she got more coverage than a quarterback during the Super Bowl. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what the hell, you know, that's 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 what show business has become, Larry. You know, and I'm I'm you're doing okay. You know, you're sur you're surviving. But how many comics do you know just don't get work? You know, or not enough to yeah, not enough to keep them afloat. So. Right, right. I mean, there were enough comics that failed, you know, in the past just because they weren't very good. But when you hear about guys like Bobby Slayton saying, I don't want to do comedy anymore, or I can't do comedy anymore, you go, what a waste. You know, what an yeah. absolute waste. Um, so, I mean, the fact is, the fact that you're working on a fairly, you're fairly consistent basis, right? Yeah. 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 Um, you aren't working, Dana Carvey isn't working lately, is he? Dana hasn't. I think Dana will be going out later this year, but he's. Uh, I think he came back to his podcast. I talked to him a couple of weeks ago, and he sounded really good. So that oh, was nice. good, good. I'm happy to hear that because it was a real tragedy what happened. We won't go into it, but his son, what, committed suicide, right? 
I had no D. Had no D. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's terrible. You know. Especially because... Yeah, I always thought... I talked to parents before. I said, if you have a kid, you must worry about them all the time. And they said, oh, yeah, we do. My mother used to use the term that uh, once you have a kid, you always sleep with one eye open. You know? I would think so, yeah. 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 Um, it, 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 and to have, a, have a, a, a child die on you is pretty, you know... I was just watching a documentary on uh, Bernie Madoff, big four-part series on the whole scandal and everything. Both his sons are dead. One committed suicide, and the other one got cancer and died. I mean, before him or after? After him. After Madoff went to jail, and it, the well, mother, the mother was still alive, and they were still with the mother. In fact, they told the mother. Okay, um, if you see our father, then you will, you'll never see us again, or nor your grandchildren. Really? So she stopped seeing Bernie. You know what? Ki- what kind of choice? If they gave you that choice, what would you do? <laughs> well, you could see him and not tell him. I... Well, no. I, if I were her, I would have been pissed at Bernie too. I mean, look at what you did to our lives. You know, first you made our lives wonderful and. We had the boat and the plane and the bob and the bomb, and all of a sudden uh, the rug gets yanked out from under us because of you, you son of a bitch. Well, the thing was amazing. So we had a Ponzi scheme, but the amazing thing was he kept it running for like 20 years. Usually a Ponzi scheme will run out fairly quickly. So I don't know how he did it. Well, nobody who ran the, you know, the departments like the SEC and so on ever went to jail for that situation. You know, of course not, yeah. And I mean, you, you know what was terrible, though? And, and I found this out in the documentary. Let's say you had money with Madoff, okay? And you decided you needed the money. So you cashed it in. All right? So now you got the money plus the interest plus uh, however amount the amount had gone up. And, of course, he could afford to pay you because as long as not everybody cashed out at the same time, he had enough money to cover it. What happened to him in the end was that uh, the whole stock market crashed and everybody was trying to pull their money out at the same time. And uh, he had a $68 billion Ponzi scheme going and only had in the bank $300 million. Wow. So if everybody <laughs> suddenly wants their money, they don't get it. The Ponzi scheme works. I mean, it doesn't get discovered until there's a drop in the stock market. So anyway, uh, people... A lot of people had pulled out their money before that point and, uh, because they needed it for one reason or another, and they got the interest and everything like that. And then this whole thing goes down. Those people who took their money out before the whole Ponzi scheme was discovered and everything were then hit up by the government for the money that they had made by pulling out. In other words, not only were you now deprived of a lot of money, if you still were in Madoff, but you had to pay taxes on that. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez almighty. I mean, come on. And, and then what they wanted to do, they wanted to get all the money that you had actually taken out, I think, because they wanted to put it in as part of the money that would go into the fund to repay people. So because you were smart enough to get out early, you're suddenly in trouble. Financially, it's ridiculous, ridiculous. So I mean, the government was just as as horrible in this whole situation as uh, as Madoff was. Yeah, it's, uh, they never protect us, and I think a lot of his victims were uh, actors. Uh, 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 Steven Spielberg was one of his victims. Oh, really? Yeah, that must be Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, it's an interesting. If anybody wants to watch it, I think it's on Netflix, and it's it's a four part series, and it's uh, it's really really quite fascinating um, about all the what was going on and how he was he. It wasn't that he was getting away with it; it was just nobody was investigating him. 
you know. Well, he was the head of the NASDAQ, so he probably nobody thought, oh, this guy, who would think the guy would pull something like that? You well, know? he was the head of NASDAQ at one yeah. point, and then later on he just, you know, was happy just to have his little Ponzi scheme. But he had to sit there knowing all along that the day was going to come where he was going to get found out, you know. And he has to know he was going to go to jail. And pretty much when they caught him, he didn't put up a fight. He just said, yep, I did it. You know, I'm guilty of it. See you later. You know, but he, he had many good years, I would imagine, except for those years where he had to sweat them catching him. <laughs> and it's kind of sad. They then had some people on who had lost money with him. And their life savings, you know. And, and it, it was it's just very sad the toll it took on people, you know. Yeah, I'm too neurotic to be a criminal like that. Wouldn't, like, if you were doing that, wouldn't you just be worried that you're going to get caught every day? Well, you and I are ne neurotics. We, we yeah. could never have a Ponzi scheme, you know. We'd always be looking over our shoulder and worrying that, you know, they were going to get us next and so on. So, um, And then you... Then we want people, and we want people to like us. So when the thing falls apart, do you ever know everyone's going to hate you? <laughs> Let me ask you this question, though. Uh, I often said to people, the difference between criminals and non-criminals are they get caught. You know, you're not a criminal until you're caught. So my mm -hmm. question always was, if you think criminals are so bad, have you ever done anything in your life which, if they caught you, you could get at least a year in jail for? Yeah, no, I have not. You have not? No. Never smoked pot? Uh, no. Oh. Okay. Never did any kind of drugs at all that were illegal? No. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever cheat on your taxes? I did not. So uh, I know, God, when I started, there was a bunch of comics that they they never filed for years. Oh, well. I kept telling them, man, they're going to catch up with you. <laughs> and they always did. Yeah. See, I could get, I could have gotten arrested, I suppose, for smoking pot back in the day, and I would have gotten at least a year in jail. Was that a year back then? Jesus. Well, I mean, I would have gotten at least a year because my question to you was, have you done anything that would have gotten you at least a year in jail? Uh, and um, um, I, I, uh, uh, you know, pot, I guess. There was one situation where if, I guess, if anybody found out, although nobody was going to find out, I was over at this friend's house. This was when I was back in my hippie days with the hair down to the floor. And uh, I'm over there, and we're smoking some weed. All of a sudden, this guy comes knocking on the door. And uh, my friend goes to the door, and it's a friend of his. And he's got a pair of handcuffs on. And he says, what's this? And he said, well, he says, I was, uh, I can't remember why they busted him. I think they busted him for pot or whatever. And um, they had put the handcuffs on him. And then at a certain point, they were taking him back to the station or something. And there was a horrible thing happening outside. And they had to stop the cop car and get out and go attend to this problem. So the door just opened and he got up and walked out and ran out and ran to my friend's place. So next thing we know, we're sitting there with a hacksaw trying to uh, <laughs> get rid of these handcuffs. We finally did it. We, we broke through the handcuffs. And uh, I thought about it for a second. I said, you know, if I was ever caught for this, I probably could get some time in jail for helping somebody escape. Yeah. You know. Uh -huh. Now that I've mentioned it, it happened here in New York, they're probably going to knock on my door tomorrow and say you're under arrest, you know. The statute of limitations has passed, okay? The oh. <laughs> statute has passed, and now, you'd be, now you wouldn't spend a year in jail if you committed murder, so times have changed. But show you how neurotic I go. It goes all the way back to when I was a kid. Uh, I was in a record shop, and in the old days in record shops, you actually had these record booths where you could go in and listen to records. And... Um, you probably don't remember that. They probably stopped them before you got old enough to go to them. Yeah. And I, um, they had these things in for, for 45s that went in the center of a 45 to um, 
put a normal spindle size hole in the record so you could play it on a normal turntable. I don't know if you remember that. Um, but anyway, uh, the, there was one in there. There was one in there that they belonged to the uh, record store, and I, I stole it. And I really? yes. Now, <laughs> if, you, if you're not talking about big thievery here, okay, you're not talking about major big time theft. It wasn't like petty, was, petty theft. People there were stealing records and putting them in their jackets. I wasn't. A, I just took one of these old things and put it in my pocket. I felt so guilty about it. I told my parents, and they said, "Well, you did it. You did it. But don't ever do it again." <laughs> but I felt guilty about that. Now, would you, you felt be, horrible if you stole something like that? What what could they have been worth? Maybe they cost a penny in those days. Yeah. Would you feel guilty? Dime. Would you feel guilty? Would you go into fits of anguish of what you had I done? I would feel a little uh, guilt, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I felt a lot of guilt. I never I never stole anything uh, outside of that, you know. Never did anything that was, you know, a lot of people didn't have, didn't even think twice about stealing things. No. You wonder how like a like a how does a serial killer operate? Mm. I guess they're, well, they're psychotic, they're so, sociopaths, so they don't have a, I guess they don't feel guilt, but. They feel some kind of justification, I suppose, for what they're doing. Maybe that's it, yeah. I mean, why don't you do it? Why aren't you a serial killer? <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> let me say, why, many... <laughs> why, aren't, why aren't you a serial killer, although you might be, and I don't know, Bob's. <laughs> well, I couldn't be today, there's too many cameras. So. Yeah, yeah, you see, that's the other reason, but. Uh, um, uh, serial killers, I don't know. I think they just basically, they, they have no guilt about doing something like that. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, register. So. I mean, you get some of these guys that rack up big numbers, you know, uh, and uh, it's, it, 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 you really have to, you know, have, to, have to question why they do it, you know. Yeah, and why you get, some guys get away forever, like the Zodiac. Huh? Uh, Zodiac, which you had up in the Bay Area? Mm -hmm. You know, they ever catch him? No. Did they ever find know who he was? No, they thought that some guy wrote a book that wrote for the Chronicle. And they did that movie. There's this movie, The Zodiac, which is a really good movie. But the uh, the guy they think did it in the movie. They later got one of the envelopes and did a DNA test on the uh, envelope, and it wasn't him. So, but he they never arrested him or anything for it. Uh, they were going out to arrest him, and uh, uh, on the way to arrest him, he died in his house of a heart attack. Really? Arthur Lee Miller, yeah. Wow. Wow. See? Weird, huh? Yeah, he lived in, um, lived in Vallejo. But to this day, they don't know who, if that, who the Zodiac Killer was. They don't know, and every year somebody comes up and says, it was my uncle because I found something in the garage that <laughs> looked like the Zodiac going. <laughs> Never them. Well, you know something? I got to tell you. Um, he may be the smartest serial killer of all time because at a certain point, he just stopped. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, therefore, the, co the trail runs really cold the minute you stop. And so, it, it, to this day, they don't know who the Zodiac Killer was. This was a guy who, what, how did he, he sent in, uh, letters to the San Francisco Chronicle and stuff? Yeah, and he shot a, he shot a cab in, uh, cabbie in San Francisco, and then he, he cut part of the guy's shirt off, and he sent that to the Chronicle, a bloody shirt. Yeah. And then he, but he, he also was doing a lot more killings, too, right? Yeah, he usually the cabbie was weird because he shot the cabbie, and then but he usually preyed on uh, couples and cu park cars and things like that and killed them. Yeah, which made uh, parking your car and making out on a date almost impossible <laughs> yeah, at that yeah. point. You know, but I mean, what a what a story that was, just incredible. So. You know. Yeah, that was the uh, late 60s, early 70s. Yes, I, I figured if I bring up serial killers, you'd know who they were. You know, yeah. you'd know all the story about them. Do you have a favorite, quickly before we go, do you have a favorite serial killer? I think it's the Zodiac because they haven't caught him. I would love to find out who it is. Yeah, so Zodiac is like your favorite serial yeah. killer. Yeah. 
I don't have a favorite serial, serial killer, but maybe next time we talk, I'll be able to let you know. Yeah, we'll make, we'll make a list. <laughs> we'll make a list. Anyway, <laughs> it's always great talking to you, Larry Bubbles Brown. G. You Lord. too, and uh, next time, um, <laughs> I better call. I better email you the night before, so we're... I was a little worried about you today. No, I I was I, I'm so sorry. I felt so bad about it, you know. Uh, but uh, I, at this age, I I usually used to remember these things. I never had to even put them down somewhere. I could remember them, you know. Well, mm. those days have passed. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry Bubbles Brown. I promise yeah. never to stiff again. Okay. Bye bye. Now in its ninth year. Now in its ninth this year. Is this is Gab American, the Great American Network. Broadcast Talk. Network. Like you've never heard it before. Like what? you've never heard what? it before. What? 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 Oh, 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 well, we may as well just play this too. Why not? Look at that. Live from Harlem, yeah, it's uh, the Ramble with Alex, and that's me. That's ridiculous. I uh, I I forgot to start recording the program, okay, and by not starting the program, recording, uh, nobody's going to hear in the reruns at least on. Uh, on the uh, uh, on the channel where we have the you know just the the half hour the hour and a half show, you know the thing that's the recording. There are two of them. There's the one that's taken directly off the live show, and then one's a, a recording that we start. I didn't start the recording. I'm screwing up so badly lately. I'm just thinking of not doing this anymore. I really am. I'm serious. Just because I feel so embarrassed by the mistakes that I make. Um. You know, why why didn't I start the recording? I do the start the recording every night. Yeah, so. Oh well, you know. And I'll tell you what happened to me today. Uh and, and and this is not fun, okay? I took another fall today. Yeah, I took another fall today. Um uh we're coming back from uh we went out to we got our, our uh what do you call it, our shingle shots. Which try saying that three times fast. Shingle shots, shingle shots, shingle shots, shingle shots. There we go. Anyway, oh by the way, if you want to hear the whole show, just watch the one that is uh, the from the live recording. Okay, instead of the one, if you, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so uh, where were we? Oh yeah, so I'm we're, we we went and got the shingle shots, and then we went over and we got a hamburger, and we're walking back. And I don't know how I how I managed to do it. I mean, it it it's ridiculous how I managed to do it. I, I don't have any idea how I did it. Okay, but I'm we're just walking, and I turn slightly and I just fall to the ground, and I banged up. You know my knee? How I banged up my knee here, which I can't show you the knee actually. You know, but anyway. Um, oh, I let me change this a little bit here for a second. I'm uh, I'm I'm not doing this right, and then you couldn't see that uh, because let me see here. Choose virtual background, and then I go uh, use green screen. Okay, there we go. All right. Anyway, uh, so uh, <laughs> so anyway, I have the knee here. Oh, there you can see it. See, I had this. This was the knee I banged up about a year ago. And I banged it up over here and over into into uh, here, where you see. And that that was for my fall today. I don't think it's going to be as bad, but it's you know, nevertheless, it's it's a pain in the butt, you know, when these things happen. Okay. Let me see here. Um, we only have two people waiting. Wow. Okay, what the hell? We can uh, still do it, you know, uh, because we got Charlie Wallace, who's very intelligent and happens to be the only rocket scientist on this program. And then uh, we have a political science major, 
in Josh Wheeler. Between the two, we could do a show about uh, should we go to the moon or not and can we afford it as a government. Uh, but anyway. Hello, Charlie. Hi. How you doing? Pretty good. I took the night off. So it, 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 you mean from uh, from uh, uh, from umpiring? Yeah, umpiring. Let me see. What does your uh, shirt say today? Science. Oh, the good thing about science is that it's true, whether you believe it or not. Okay, that's is that for the Republicans to read? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they feel they know more about science than we do, right? They certainly feel like they know more about medicine than doctors do. You, you know what I love. What I really love is uh, the oh here comes Mark here comes uh, Mark Thorner oh good hello Mark. Um, what I hate about politicians, what I hate about the guys in Washington D.C., is all of them seem to be coming up with their own idea of what science is. Hmm. Like they don't to begin with, they don't understand what AI is. They have no concept. They just know that it it's got to be evil. You know, and uh, I, I, they, they, they keep making decisions on science. They, they keep telling us scientifically what's a good abortion, what's a bad abortion. You know, the abortion pill isn't safe. The fact that the abortion pill has been used for what the last 20, 25 years, and there's mm -hmm. never been one, I think, one death from the use of the abortion pill, and then to go in front of a committee and say it's dangerous. Yeah, okay. How's it? It's dangerous for the fetus. I'll agree with that. You know, so is, so is whiskey. But, huh. so, yeah. is, so is whiskey. Exactly. Go ahead, mom. Have a have a lot of booze on us. We sell that freely in this country, and you can have a kid who had fetal what is it called? Fetal, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome. Fetal alcohol yeah. syndrome. Yeah. So anyway, uh, smoking bad for the baby too. Yeah, smoking's terrible for the baby, especially if you blow the smoke up the womb. <laughs> you know, it's not 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 a very good thing. Uh, hello to Mark Thorner. How's everything down in the wonderful wacky land? Eh. <laughs> oh boy. That good, huh? Yeah, it's the same old, same old. At least the weather's nice right now, so there, there is that. Yeah, but uh, he's in Florida. So. Anyway. Yeah. So and, and you guys reminiscing about uh, old department stores. I swear to God, I was having that talk with my mom today, 93 years old. Yeah, we mentioned, and this is, this is for people, if, you, if you're watching this show on the, uh, on the dubbed version, forget it, we didn't run, we didn't run uh, Bubbles tonight. But we ran Bubbles live. So if you watched it live and you go back and you watch the live playback, then uh, uh, you'll see... Uh, that uh, you know that uh, that we were talking about Macy's. Oh uh, no, A and S is because Brooklyn. Yeah, but the, but right. Macy's is Macy's own A and S too. No, but I no, well Federated I think did buy them. They bought A and S's and Stearns, and they're not around anymore. It's just Macy's, you know. Well, when I was a kid, I mentioned this with uh, with uh, Bubbles. When I was a kid. They brought, I think it was maybe in my early teens, maybe, they brought Macy's to San Francisco. My mother went batshit. She loved, oh my God, Macy's is coming to San Francisco. And she was so into that, you know. The only, and now they announced they're closing a lot of their stores, one of which is the San Francisco Macy's. Wow, that's gotta be like 70 years, easily. You know, so uh, when I think that it was like yesterday that they opened it up, but it was a big deal that Macy's was oh, yeah. leaving New York and coming to San Francisco as well, you know. And they, I think they're keeping the New York store open because how are they going to hold the parade every year? <laughs> yeah, so. uh, but but you remember when what was, when what stores were open? Uh, there was well, Bloomingdale's was still open. What's on Gimbel's? Gimbel's, oh, or as they used to call it, Gembel's. Gimbel's. <laughs> yeah, but Gimbel's was right next to Macy's. Right. And they were always in competition with each other. The only thing that Gimbel's could never compete with was Christmas time with Macy's because Macy's was the Christmas time place. That's where every parent took their kid to sit on Santa's lap. 
<laughs> Mommy, where are we going where I can sit on Santa's lap? Well, we're going to Gimbel's. What? <laughs> you know. No, you can't go there. You know, that's not that's not Christmas time over at Gimbel's. That's for Jews. You know. <laughs> Uh, you're Jewish, Mark, right? So's uh, Jeff. So's so's so's, <laughs> so's our good friend uh, Alan here. Who else is Jewish? Oh, I am. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, God hired a minority here. Did you ever feel like bad when Christmas came around? That really? No. No, because uh, I always felt it was kind of like. It was kind of a mixed blessing. You know, my parents always let me celebrate it. You know, they got me gifts at Christmas. They also got me gifts for my birthday, which was a week earlier. You know. Well, remember, that's because you were a one angle child, uh, uh, only uh, one. Uh, uh, say, yeah, yeah uh, uh, only child, yeah. Okay. And and the problem was? My mother, Marjorie, always says, yeah, no, you were an only child. You were an only child. And I go, yeah, and, and what's the problem with that? Give me, give me one bad thing about being an only child. Well, you didn't have any brothers or sisters. I said, good. <laughs> you know, that's why I grew up being very selfish, okay? You didn't have a big brother that would beat you up every other day. Yeah, no big brother to beat you up, you know. No little sister to get the extra affection because there were only there were two other brothers in the family. Mm. And then also, isn't there a thing about birth order? That mm. children turn out a certain way based on birth order? That's what they say. And the middle child mm. is what, the worst? Or, yeah. Because he gets all the... The uh, middle child gets all the hand-me-downs, mm -hmm. which are not necessarily good. Were you an only child, Josh, or? Uh, no. No. How many other kids in your family? Uh, other than me, there are three others. Three others. So there were four in your family. Yes. Well, obviously not a Jewish family. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jewish families are very are usually quite small. Usually, no, really. Look at the Orthodox community. Oh well, for, yeah, I forgot. Oh, I, I forgot about the Yids. That, that, that's yeah. because they think they're Mexican. Every other week they got to make a baby. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, what? You're producing your own minion? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but you, you got to go a while because if you get a girl in there, you need ten men for the minion. So, yeah. Well, you know, you would go into these stores that were owned by the Hasidim. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, or as we Jews like to call them, the Yids, uh, <laughs> and uh, they um, they would have stores like B and H. Photo is That's you go down, they, they're closed on Saturdays. All right, of course. And, and then they Sabbath. huh? It's Sabbath, of course. It's a Sabbath, you know. And uh, sometimes there are you know there's like. Uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and all of that, and it closed for two days at a time. But working there are, some of them are Hasidim. You know, they're wearing the payas and the, uh, that's the hair that curls down to here, and the uh, long beards. Long beards and the, the talus, you know, which is usually under the coat. All right? Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then there are the non uh, Hasidim who work there as well. But uh, uh, you know who's running the place. Let me put it that way. Uh, and um, they um, they also have Hasidim women working there. But you know you can tell the difference. The Hasidim men all wear yarmulkes. In fact, I, w I was thinking of just wearing a yarmulke all the time in New York to pass as Hasidim. You know, but I, I go in the B and H. Hey, give me a, give me a discount. Okay, I got the hat. Okay, um, but the women don't wear yarmulkes. You know what they wear? Wigs. Well, there's they have to wear a headpiece. Most of the time, they're wearing scarves when they're not working. When they're out in public, they wear wigs. Because what yeah. is it? You're not supposed to bear your head to God. Is that what it is? You know. I mean, come on, it's God who made me bald in the first place. He may have a chance to look at it, his fine, wonderful work. 
how many how many of the four Jews that were here were anything other than Reform Judaism? I was raised conservative. Oh, you were. Yep. Okay. I was raised raised so liberal that we were Nazis. <laughs> Who, whose line is that? That's some old comedian's old joke. I think that was Lenny Bruce who said that. And the fam my family was so uh, so uh, so. Uh, uh, well, I was I was raised in a reform synagogue. What about you, Jeff? Uh, I I remember when I was thirteen years old, I decided at that point I didn't have to go there again. Oh wow! Well. Right. Hmm. You were running down the street because they had a moil chasing you. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody here know who a moil? What? Uh, well, uh, let's ask the non-Jews in the group here what a moil is. Yeah. Okay. Do you know, Josh? Uh, no. Well, a every every Jewish male, after he's born, has a ritual in which they do. It's a, a lovely ritual. I don't know who created it. <laughs> It was a warm and fuzzy ritual of cutting the tip off your penis. Or skin. And the guy who does it is the moil. Yep. He's yeah. usually a urologist, I think. No, usually <laughs> a rabbi. He's got to be a rabbi. What do you mean, he's got to be a urologist? <laughs> oh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, uh, Dr. So-and-so. We've come to you because we want our son uh, uh, circumcised. How old is he? Twenty-seven. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean mm -hmm. you know. Is it eight days? It's like it's kind of a, a ritual in which you're trying to scare a mole out of the ground. Okay, so. And they claim the baby doesn't. Uh, if you've ever been to one, they claim the baby doesn't feel it. The baby is screaming its, it's lungs out. out. You well, know. That's why. And, after it's done, they put a drop of wine. Oh, oh no, the they do that beforehand. Oh, yeah, they got to numb up the baby they, a they, put, they soak uh, um, um, something like a washcloth or whatever, a towel, yeah. in wine. And then they drip it into the kid's mouth and get him good and drunk. <laughs> All right? Hey, I wanted to because be... Because God forbid they use Novocaine first or uh, something uh, like that. Well, uh, there's supposedly at that point in your life, you don't have that much feeling down there. Yeah, right. But so how come the kid screams and yells and, right, yeah. you know, cries his eyes out? And then and then you hand the the um, um, the baby to the grandmother and she holds the baby and calms him down. Right. Okay. As he bleeds all over the yeah, place. Yeah. As the moil is sitting there with his knife going, <laughs> cleaning it off, you know, where's the next, next. one? Yeah. Next. Next. Who came up with that idea? You know? Who came up with having a party after you do it? I mean, yeah. Well, when I, I was very, I was very privileged. I was uh, David Feldman, who I no longer talk to, but David Feldman uh, had his son, and they went to do the bris, the, and they hired the moil, and we all showed up there. And and uh, David said, you know, there are certain things they do at these brises. One of which, and they explained the whole thing. He said, and one other thing is that the parents pick a selection from their favorite novel or book and ask somebody to read it for them. And since you're the announcer, we'd like you to do it. And I said, okay, what's your favorite book? And he says... Elter Skelter. No. No. <laughs> what are you, what are you, you ruined my timing. Oh, sorry. You ruined my timing. Now I'm not going to tell the joke. Oh, you didn't even say hi to me when I came on. So. Oh, hi, big deal. Anyway, they hand me the book. It's Moby Dick. <laughs> I can picture this. So there I am at a bris reading from Moby Dick. <laughs> Moby, no you, you know. <laughs> There's a bad joke in there somewhere. No, there isn't a joke in there. That's for real. I read from Moby Dick. There's no cure for Moby Dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, there is no there is no cure for most. I agree <laughs> with you. Gee, I'm glad you I'm glad, glad you knew that for a fact. Um, but anyway, it it I never could figure out why. Uh, you know, they they say that they, they argue that there's no reason for circumcision. There used to be, I think, back in ancient times when it was for health purposes. All the Jewish rituals, being kosher and so on, were all health rituals, which as time went on, no longer were relevant. Um, so, uh, you know. I'm not, I'm not sure if I, if I had got married and had a kid and he was a boy, I'm not sure I would have had him circumcised. You, you don't think so? Why not? Well, one, I wasn't very religious, and I'm still not. Why not? Have you ever asked a woman whether she likes to look at a circumcised dick? No. Yeah. Marjorie says they look funny uncircumcised. Well, well it looks like an anteater. Yeah. Once you get it hard, it looks like any other penis, but, you know. Yes. <laughs> All you got to do is teach Of course, if anybody here hundred. is uncircumcised, I apologize. Okay. No, don't be. Huh? No need to apologize. Oh, okay. You're the ones that got brutalized, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know who isn't uncircumc who's uncircumcised here. Right. Yeah. And But and, it's not very common. I, I Maybe more common now in the black community. Mm. But I, when I went to high school, I had two friends that were black, and mm. I think they were the only two blacks in the whole high school. But in any case... You know, whenever they got undressed for showers and stuff, everybody would look at them, and they were uncircumcised. I just really because most porno films of black guys, they're 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 uh, they're circumcised. Really? Well, that changed in the seventies and eighties. I think it became more because doctors wanted to make that extra money. You know? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I just I you know I I never uh, I I hear it's not important, you know, that you can get along without it. Oh yeah, yep. but I don't know. If you can get along without toes, you can get out along with <laughs> out your foreskin. Yeah, Charlie. Charlie's going without toes. That's that's Some. good. Yeah. Um, do you have all your toes, Josh? Uh, yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Want to make sure. <laughs> oh, when I was forty, I had all my toes too. <laughs> he has no. <laughs> I'm just thinking he hasn't been circumcised and he's got four toes. Missing. How many toes are missing? Six. Six toes. Ooh. You know, another four, we're going to have to hold you up. Uh, do yeah, you have well, one foot that's completely, or do you? Yeah, one foot, I have no toes, and I have one on the other. So. Yeah, oh. yeah. But it, does I'm it, missing one on the other. Yeah. Do you, you have to have special something in your shoes or whatever? Or do you? Not anymore. They tried to get me fitted for them, but it actually made it worse. So I just yeah. don't worry about it anymore. Yeah. How long did it take to heal? A couple months. Yeah. Time. You must have had to learn how to walk again because your toes have a lot to do with your walking balance. Yeah, well, I wasn't the most graceful person to start with, but yeah, I, I do I do tend to fall down a lot, umpiring. So they really, I, I fall down, but every time I fall down, I hurt myself. Yeah, don't do that. Look what happened to Joe Lieberman. Don't fight falling down anymore. Yeah, I watched. I saw that he didn't. I should have sent him a cane beforehand. Yeah, right. Well, I'm going to start. Alex a cane, I'm going to so start, he... start taking a cane out when I walk. Not because I need it for walking, but because I want to keep. If I'm gonna, if I start to fall, maybe that will keep me from really taking a big plots. But maybe, uh, you know. But I, uh, well, I. It really, also adds a little bit of security to your mind that if you're on uneven ground or wet ground or something, that you could use the cane and less chance of falling. Yeah, I, I guess. You know, I mean, I don't know. I think probably if I use crutches, I'll be in better shape from uh, falling. Alex, have you ever been tested for your balance? Yes. Well, I've, I've got balance problems because I've got neuropathy. Okay, that's what I, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. My memory, well, but um, isn't there like a kind of therapy that they can do with you to try to... Mm. Uh, That's not the gabapentin for, but it, it. Well, no, that that work. actually, what happens is the uh, the uh, I take uh, pregabalin, which is pretty much the same thing, 
and, but it makes me wobblier because it makes me <laughs> lose my sense of balance. Yeah. If I didn't take it, I might have a sense of balance, but then my feet would hurt a lot. So, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a toss up. So I, you know, welcome folks again, once to uh, organ recital. Um, but uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not fun. It's not fun. So anyway, so I've had a lot of technical problems today. One thing after another. Okay. And, um, um, uh, I had a problem today. All of a sudden, all my, uh, a lot of my YouTube uh, videos from the recorded live ones, like right now, um, mm -hmm. uh, are uh, disappeared. I don't know where they went. I don't know how they, how I lost them. But anyway, I still have them all saved. But nevertheless, it's you just wonder why, you know. So after the show, if I wanted to go watch it on YouTube, it wouldn't be there. It wouldn't, no, it would be there. This will be there. And But when I put the show on, like, um, uh, the other channel, where I then put it up on um, Facebook, huh. that one will not have bubbles. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, so, just watch, watch the one. I don't know where you go for that anymore. You know what I've also put up on my uh, on my on my Gabnet uh, site today? I have a QR code. I okay. I was thinking about it. I went. I was getting lunch today, and they had a you know, they don't have menus anymore. They have QR codes, and if you don't have a, a phone, then you can't find out what you can have for lunch. But anyway, and I went. There's got to be a place you can go, and you get these QR codes. And I said. Where do I go to get a QR code? And it said, right here, boom. <laughs> and it's just you put in your, your email, you know, your uh, site, your you URL. Need, yeah, you used to need to read the QR codes, a software program on your phone, but it's built into iPhones now. You just hold the phone over the QR code, and it's built into it, and it reads it for you. Really? Are you I thought you, no, I, th you have, I have to bring up the QR thing. QR I know. Code. I just put my phone the photo over it and it brings it up really i don't know mm -hmm. i also have a program on there from years ago and so yeah but maybe, any, it's, maybe it's automatically yeah, yeah it's probably automatically doing it because i i did it uh um you know i just hold it up and so you have a qr code on your website so people could send you money easy no so they can go to the site on their phone you know and on their ipad mm. have it there you know, just a little convenience, and everybody, and nobody ever tells you what the QR code is for anyway, and it usually takes you to a website. So that's exactly what this does. So, hmm. so I just said, you know, gabnet.net, and then it uh, made up the QR code, and that was it. Hmm. And it works. It does work. Yes, everybody, go over to gabnet.net right now. <laughs> and look at the page, and over the bottom, bottom right-hand side, there's a QR code. And uh, I should have a QR code that sends them somewhere else. <laughs> that would be fun. Or porn site, maybe. That would be that would be fun too. You know. DonaldTrump.com. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. DonaldTrump.com. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slash, Rick roll. slash sexual pony ride. I don't know. Now, do you think, let's talk politics for a moment. And we, we haven't gotten into politics tonight, and I think it's important to. Um, do you think Donald Trump is circumcised? <laughs> I almost lost my water that I was drinking. Well, let's talk to the political wonk here, uh, Josh. Josh, do you think, uh, he, does he seem like he's uh, circumcised? Well, I would say, based on historical fact, there's a 50% chance that he is and a 50% chance that he isn't. Well, that okay. certainly gives us an it answer, is doesn't it? Bullshit. Right. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. There, that, that's, that's what I think. Let's uh, ask Suri. Hey, Suri. <laughs> is Donald Trump circumcised? I think that He's maybe... He's so fat that he doesn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Stormy Daniels. Did you, did you ever see Stormy Daniels on the uh, uh, Kimmel show? 
Um, he um, had Stormy Daniels on, and he had a, a thing made up of different size penises. <laughs> and he had her pick the one that looks the most like <laughs> Donald Trump's penis, and she picked the thing that looked like a mushroom. <laughs> So, so the only thing that came up was Donald Trump had his son circumcised in 2016. I was amazed that ABC allowed these penises to be displayed so she could pick one. You know. <laughs> mm. That's a little strange. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, how about Joe Biden? Do you think he's circumcised? Nah. Nah? No. What makes you you suddenly came up with that? I don't answer. know. I just I think the Catholics were into that. Yeah, Catholics didn't circumcise back when right. Joe Biden. Oh, they really? didn't when I was growing up. So. Oh, really? Well, I don't think anybody really cares. So. <laughs> no. It's it's not gonna. It, it, one vote's not gonna go one way or the other. You know. By the way, I'm so amazed at. First of all, just when it's it's election season, and the way all these people are whoring themselves out, mm -hmm. Donald Trump, to upstage Biden, who was holding a big deal yesterday at Radio City Music Hall, where he raised twenty six million dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, went out to like I don't know. Queens or Long Island, I can't remember where, where this cop lived who was killed here mm -hmm. recently, to meet with the family. And and really, I mentioned last night that Trump is becoming a uh, a uh, ambulance chaser. Anytime <laughs> somebody gets somebody somebody gets killed by somebody, he goes out He's to there. say, "My hearts and prayers are with you." He went to the first place he went to was somebody who was killed by I think by a. Um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, killed by a, uh, a an immigrant, an immigrant or something. Yeah, uh, and um, he um, he went out there, and she said, the wife said, "I don't like this. We don't want this to be political. My husband is dead." So she really berated him for even doing it. Yeah, you know. But today I hear that. Joe Biden is going to, where is that bridge again? Is it Baltimore? Where is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maryland. Oh, Maryland. Sir Francis, Sir Francis Key Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Baltimore, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, here's the walking encyclopedia. Well, it's not, it's not Sir Francis Key. <laughs> it's Francis Scott Key. Francis Scott Key. Francis Scott Key. Francis Scott Key. Yeah. He was, the Queen did not knight him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. But he did write the national anthem. He did write the national anthem. Stars, yeah, well, Star actually, Trek he movie. didn't. He only wrote the lyrics. Right. Yeah, just the lyrics. The yeah. the actual song mm -hmm. was a bar singing song called yep. "Anacreon in Heaven." Right. Uh, and I, I don't know. Originally, it was something like "Let's drink some more beer, let's get drunk till we <laughs> fall down," you know, something like that. And uh, there's a there's an Irish band, uh, Ash Oak and Thorn, that uh, that performed it. Very good. With the original yeah. lyrics. Yeah. 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 Uh, and and speaking of Irish, um, you know, I, should, I wanted to join into the uh, conversation about circumcisions. Oh, boy, here we go. I, yeah. I was born Roman Catholic Irish, and I am circumcised. So I would guess that uh, Joe Biden is circumcised as well. Oh. You know, okay. but most Asians, if you look it up, I just looked it up. Well, I'm not really Asian. I think we should no, have a club my, for my daddy, My daddy, Tadashi Yamaguchi, was not circumcised. No, he wasn't circumcised. Okay, but, you know, I mean, we should probably start a little club of people who are circumcised and refer to each other as circs or something like that. <laughs> so I grew up in the Catholic school system in Chicago, and mm -hmm. I've met hundreds of guys going through school, and none of them were circumcised in Chicago. How did you know that? Because we took oh, phys ed sure. and we shower after that, or we actually, when we did swimming, we swam naked. For, yeah, but did for, you did you did you did you check out each other's dicks? Did you do that? The, it was they, right there. They yeah. swam naked because the priest wanted to watch them swim. That's probably why. <laughs> but they said it was for, uh, Sorry. Hygienic reasons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. yeah. 
But anyway, um, um, Jeff's got his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Uh, so I was in a high school, mm -hmm. all boys at that time, and we would swim, same thing, naked. Mm -hmm. You'd check out who's who. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. So never... how many guys were uncircumcised in that school? I don't know. We had a lot of Italians, so. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> now this is uh, you know what I'm thinking about I you know every night I have to after this is over I have to go and post the shows to YouTube <laughs> and they ask me for the sake of advertising uh, was there any questionable material on this show was there <laughs> were there any bad words that were said whatever and I, I tonight probably because at no point did we use a four letter word yet Oh. I would just say no. But then I'm thinking, could I get caught for having this conversation on circumcision? No, oh, it's, it's anatomy. Yeah, I mean, what, why is that a problem? <laughs> Mark's kind of giving up on us here. What are your thoughts, Mark? Yeah, yeah, like I'm going to really trust uh, Google's algorithm on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, machine learning in the guise of artificial intelligence. Yeah, there's our real winner. You know, uh, I, 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 almost every night it says to me, uh, by the way, uh, we're, you're, we're not monetizing you. So then I have to request for a review, and then I always get a note saying, congratulations, you've passed the review. Well, I knew that. There wasn't a single four-letter word in the whole damn show. Hmm. But... Every about every other night, you know, I gotta ask for a review. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You know, so. Uh, but that's their, how good their algorithm is. Their AI. Yeah. So anyway, maybe we can get like a special little uh, thing we can wear on your shirt. Yeah. That says, "I'm immune." Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so anyway, so um, where were we? we were talking about uh, um, a, a Trump, and we were talking. Oh yeah. So anyway, I was talking about Baltimore or wherever this Francis Scott Key yeah. Bridge. It, 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 oh, oh, say can you see it? Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I'm sure they pull that joke a lot down there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, today Biden announces, okay, that next week. He's going down there. And I'm thinking, well, what's he going to be able to do? In fact, he Did can he do... The federal government's going to pay the entire yeah. cost to rebuild it? Yeah, but he can sign those papers at the White House, can't he? But no, he won't be able to do it next week because he's going down to Baltimore. Okay? And I'm thinking, if he really cared about Baltimore, he would have gone yesterday. But, oh, he had that $26 million dollar benefit at Radio Priorities. City Music Hall. What? Priorities. Yeah. Yeah. I so obvi obviously that million. wasn't a priority for him. You know. And now uh, Josh, who is the political wonk on our show, whatever that means, uh, will now tell us why all politicians are whores. <laughs> Josh? Because God wants them to be. <laughs> there you go. That's the official answer. And who said that being a whore was a bad thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. God. <laughs> and, you know, right now I'm looking for a good Bible for my home hearing, and I think I'm going to hire... Um, I think I'm going to go out and get one of those Bibles that Trump is selling. It comes with it comes with the Constitution. Yeah. Not that he yeah. not that he knows it. Now, where does the Constitution go in that Bible? Before <laughs> the main text know. of the Bible? I don't or know. I just heard that it back. comes with a copy of the Constitution. So. You know what I bought today? There I I spent uh, I should have brought it in here. Fifty six bucks on it. Uh I I um bought uh from Amazon. Uh, this book on um, Rocketeer, the comic. 
It was done by Dave, what's his name? Dale Stevens was his name? What was Dave, his name? Stevens. Dave Stevens. And I saw a documentary on him a day or so ago, and I said, this is some of the most gorgeous graphic novel work I've ever seen in my life. So I had to get it, and I got it today. And it's gorgeous, just gorgeous. But he was sexier than most guys. He, the, the girlfriend for Rocketeer was based on Betty Page. And actually, this is the complete works of, of, of him doing Rocketeer. And towards the end of his life, she was naked a lot. So, I mean, a, a beautiful work. Just absolutely. You know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, Oh yeah, in Mark. fact, Dave was really good friends with one of my oldest friends and I've gotten a couple of postcards from Dave along the way. Oh really? And, uh, yeah, and uh, really nice. By the way, yes, the face was Betty Page, but the model that he used? Was his wife. Brink Stevens. Brink Stevens, who he divorced, but still kept, uh, she still kept modeling for him. Yeah, and the movie version wasn't that bad either. No, I like oh. the movie. Yeah. Uh, but it was all taken from, um, it was kind of lifted from Commander Cody and the kinda. Lost Am. <laughs> kind of, it is. How yeah. did he get away but with that? How did he get away with that without getting sued? Well, how did Proctor and Bergman get away with Jamin forever? <laughs> you know, they did. It's just like, wow, you know. But what a... It, it it was lightning in a bottle from the first issue onward hmm. it was like yeah what's the next issue what's the next and issue and he took you forever know? to do each issue because he 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 would they said his main artistic tool wasn't a pen or uh, or ink or whatever it was an eraser because he yeah. he oh that eyebrow isn't right and he would go back and redo the eyebrow and spend days redoing the eyebrow. Which is interesting because I think he made his bones as a storyboard out, artist out west in, Cal in uh, Hollywood, which means you have to be fast. Well, he worked, didn't he work for Hanna-Barbera at one point or somebody? Yes, he did yeah. with Doug Wiley, the guy who created Johnny Quest. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, holy, you know, you look at this guy's background, you're like, holy crap. But you his, know? his artwork is just phenomenal. I mean, you know, it's it's not Rembrandt, okay? It's a different kind of thing, but of its sort, which is, you know, it was pretty good. Wait, 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 hold on a second. I'm not used to this. There is Kevin sitting oh. there in a place mm -hmm. I've never seen Kevin before. He's usually in his office. Where are mm -hmm. you, Kevin? I'm up in Gresham, Oregon. Oh, really? Yeah. And now is yeah. that, is that a uh, hotel room? No, this is. Uh, remember my buddy Troy? Yeah. Who passed away from ALS? Oh yeah. Come up into his house. His wife. We're visiting his wife. Oh okay. All right. Yeah, and then we're going to take my uh, daughter back to uh, university in Eugene down south yeah. later or on Sunday. Yeah, well, that's very nice. It, uh, is it cold up there? Because you got a fireplace going there. It's stoked. Nice. <laughs> well, stoked. I'm actually downstairs. That's the heater. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's not really. It's it, it, is is that uh, does that just operate on its own with gas and stuff, or uh, do you have to stoke the remote thing? control? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, is, is that actually a video of flames there, or no? They're flames, and it's actually heater. It's kicking out heat. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. downstairs. They're Wait a minute. Let me just warm my hands by your fire. There <laughs> feels good. Ah. Oh. I'm in the Lego room. Hmm. I'm in the Lego room. That's what she does on her spare time now, is build Legos. She's got these extravagant Legos everywhere that they've been building over the years. Okay. She's got a, like a four-foot Star Wars Lego over here and a roller coaster over there and lighthouses and buildings and all kinds of stuff here. Wow. wow. Is this for your daughter? No. No, this is my friend's wife and her son okay. in these things. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. So uh, also, uh, I want to know what's going on with the Tom Yamaguchi. What political things have you been doing lately? 
<laughs> oh boy, I don't want to get started on that. <laughs> Why don't you want to get started on it? Uh, politics in Berkeley right now are pretty pretty wacky. Um, uh, one thing is, I'm actually a, a, a city commissioner right now. Really? Uh, Where Berkeley? Yeah, yeah. I uh, wow. I joined the uh, the commission on aging. And uh, and the uh, the city council member that appointed me uh, resigned, and uh, and I don't know I there's a special election to to replace him. But um, and did you run? No, no, oh. no, I'm not running. Oh, oh, so you're just taking it while they wait for have yeah, for an election? Yeah, I I don't know. Uh, one of the candidates says he's not going to replace any of his commissioners, so. You know, I guess I'm sort of safe, you know. They could replace me if they wanted. But uh, the sad thing was uh, this particular councilman, uh, Rigel Robinson, really great guy. Yeah. And uh, and uh, he uh, he was just harassed. I mean, you know, the, the they they were they were they were just you know he was getting death threats and things like that. And he says, "I had enough of this. I'm 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 yeah. gone." Yeah, he just quit. And he was also planning on running for mayor too, and so he quit his uh, mayoral campaign as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'm very much bummed out about that because I, because he was the kind of, actually I, he when he did his uh, announcement a video, he had me in his video. You know, we were walking in local park with my bicycle and talking, and so yeah, I'm pretty bummed out about it. You know, um, but you know, uh, it's a, it's unfortunate because. That's happening down in local politics, a lot of places right now. And I've seen it trickle down from, you know, the, the DCs and the, and the, the, the higher end. And it's, look, it's trickling down to local politics. It's pretty nasty. People are yeah. doing nasty things to each other. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well he got a, he got a double whammy. Um, one thing, um, uh, there's big, of course, the continuing pro uh, controversy of People's Park, and the council voted to put some housing on the on the park. You oh, know, and, oh yeah, I saw that. And uh, and actually, that's the that's the district that he represents is the area that, that includes People's Park. And so, as a pro housing person, he he voted for that deal, and uh, then the university, which owns the land. Uh, came and evicted uh, the homeless people out of it and put up a whole bunch of these, oh, what do you call them? The, you know, the, the containers that you put on container ships? Yeah, 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 around the... Uh, right, right, did a whole perimeter around it. It, was, it really looks ugly. Yeah. And so <laughs> so people started harassing in front, and then the thing with Gaza exploded. Yeah. And so, and and and, and there, every every city council meeting there's a whole contingent of people that are just shouting down the council members shouting down other people just because they they just want to have their little temper tantrum and um what what can local governments do about gaza that's what i don't get yeah that. yeah that doesn't make sense they're all no, sitting no. around they <laughs> go to the they go to the council meeting santa cruz monterey everywhere they're all going in and saying you know stop the you know ceasefire 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 yeah. and what the hell can they do about it absolutely by the nothing. way can i mention that yesterday when they did the radio city music hall protesters like crazy outside mm -hmm. about right. about gaza yeah right i mean more than biden would have liked to have had at, at that the gathering um but that's appropriate I mean, that's a yeah. It's a bigger. It's a well, bigger. Well, I mean, platform. I would be, if I'd known it, I probably would have gone down and protested too because he's done nothing about this. You know. Uh, no, I can't say he's done nothing about it. No, I wouldn't say that at all. Well, well not, he hasn't done but, enough to you know keep him in good stead with those people, and they're not asking for much. They're asking for the United States just not to take sides in that deal. Well, we did abstain from the last vote. Uh, and the, we and abstained. The we didn't vote. That's the bad well, part. That's different than vetoing. That's a I lot guess, different I guess, than media. I, I, it's enough to piss off Netanyahu. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> they, he was not happy with that about that. Yeah, but decision. I think I think we should have voted uh, the right way on that, and not not just simply held out and said. I mean, do you do you feel we did the right thing by just not uh, by abstaining? Well, I think it that you know that you know under the politics of the situation, you know. Uh, maybe that would have been the right thing. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that's that's going on, you know. You know, politics and, be da- it, but politics be damned. People are dying. I mean, at an extraordinary rate. I mean, when you consider that 1,200 people were killed by by uh, Hamas in Israel, and then the the uh, uh, Israelis went in and killed. About thirty-three thousand people in Gaza. That's a little disproportionate, you know. That's what I. There's a. It's a, if it isn't overkill, then you can see overkill from there, you know. Yeah. Uh, what well, I don't know about this. Uh, oh, you know, unproportionate. I mean, I think any deaths are hard, and and yeah. the way that Hamas did it is a, exceedingly hard. You know, of course, I, can't, of course. I can't understand how people can just gloss over. Of course, but then how you do know, you... And that's what a lot of these people yeah, but, in the city council Tom... meetings are doing. They're just like, they're glossing over this horrendous, uh, you know, attack. And, you know, people get No, we're not glossing it over at all. Tom, Tom, getting, getting Tom, 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 we're not, we're not uh, uh, glossing it over. It, what the, well, what there they, are people who are. If 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 it had it stopped at that point, the world would have been sympathetic towards Israel. But with what's happened, nobody is sympathetic towards Israel. You know, I, they they took what was uh, the sympathy of the world and overnight turned it into the exact opposite. And as a Jew, I feel uncomfortable with that. I think that Netanyahu has created more anti-Semites than anybody I can name in recent history, you know, and that includes uh, 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 what's his name, Kim Kardashian's former husband. <laughs> oh, Kanye West. Kanye West. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yay. Yay. How, how Yay. is it? How is it down there uh, uh, in Florida um, on this issue? I mean, are they pretty much strictly behind Israel all the way down there? Because it's a Pretty large much. Jewish population, or a large Pretty Jewish much. population that's afraid of the cold, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, do you do? I they, think I think Netanyahu wants to destroy Gaza and push it into the ocean. I think he's just like Trump. Yeah. Well, he's not just like Trump. He, well, Jared Kushner wants Jared Kushner wants to wants to develop it. You know, he wants to we're going to push out all those Palestinians. Let's let's build up uh, some some hotels. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how 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 how, do, how does it play itself out down there? Uh, do you find it? Do you have to keep your mouth shut, Mark, about things. I I do not share my opinions about this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is there a reason? I mean, is it just that? Yeah. Because. Uh, I see it through a different lens than everyone else, so it's not the popular opinion right now. How is the how how is that lens? Is it well? You're a Jew, of course. Yes, and I'm very much a Zionist, and I've been oh, watching. Oh, okay. Since I've been a kid, what's been going on there, and <sighs> yeah, I agree with Mark. Not, he hasn't even said it. I am not pro-Palestinian at this point. And if you know the history, if you know really know the history, and I'm going back before the Second World War, through the Second World War, after the origins of what happened, then you'll know that, yeah. Well, the origins go all the way back to Balfour. No, this goes back even before that, my friend. Well, the goes- Jews, the Jews, and the uh, and the Palestinians in the area—I guess I don't know if they were called Palestinians back then—really got along very well. Uh, in fact, the Jews who lived in Palestine were considered part of the Palestinian people who lived in that area. They just happened to be Jews as opposed to Muslims, uh, and. Um, 
Uh, Balfour, ba Balfour came along and made trouble. You know, and these two, these two groups, which got along up until that point, stopped getting along. Look up, look up something called Hitler's Arabs. Hitler's Arabs? Just look it up afterwards. I will. Read, I will. I, read yeah. the history, and then when you when you start connecting the dots, you'll be like, "Oh shit!" Okay, there <laughs> okay. goes your monetization. Sorry. Okay. Well, no, uh, no, that's okay. That's okay. That is a political comment. <laughs> well yeah, taken. Well taken. I, but the thing that really bothered me was not so much. There was like a lot of anti-Semitism that came up out in this country after the October sixth. That I was like, whoa! Oh, oh, that that was yeah, yeah. That that an overkill. Was, that that really made me well. Want what to go. what I'm saying is is that I think what Netanyahu did, and this is just between you and me, and the lamppost, and that is uh, what he did gave a justification to people to be. I mean, they were always anti Semites, but it gave them a sense of permission to come out and play out that anti Semitism. You know, and it, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's not a, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's just the whole thing's horrible. And so I, why doesn't Hamas, if they want the war to stop, stop lobbing missiles into well, Israel? Hamas, Hamas. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, and, and return the hostages immediately. Because Israel Hamas doesn't care, because Hamas, do, because Hamas doesn't care, but Hamas does not make up most of the Gazan people. Well, they were voted in, weren't they? They were voted in in, I think it was 2012. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mark. 2006. 2006? 2005 or six. Yeah. Okay, then 2006. And they had then never allowed elections to be held again. And it's pretty well known that the people in Gaza are not happy with Hamas. But Hamas rules the place uh, like, a, like a, what it looks like, a prison camp, you know? Uh, yeah. And that, that's the problem they've had. Um, and those kids that have been killed weren't even born in 2006. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's it, all of it's, it's, a, it's a big mistake, the whole problem down there. And, and what are we going to do about it? There's not much we can unless uh, some people want to suddenly come to a table and talk about it. But uh, this is, uh, I don't know, this is not, not good. It's never been good. And um, we've never done anything to try and solve the problem. And every president, by the way, I'm going to start playing the theme here. Every president we've had in recent years, in, in, this, in the last second half of the last century, have tried to solve that problem one way or another. And they've all failed, okay? Uh, because nobody's been able to come up with the secret sauce to solve the problem. Uh, hey, listen. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate it. I really do. You know, uh, Mark, thank you so much for being here this evening. We enjoyed you being here, as well as Charlie and uh, Alan and Jeff and, of course, Tommy Amaguchi. It's always a pleasure when Tom comes to the table, as well as Kevin, who's looking very cozy up there in <laughs> the, the northern part of the United States. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me warm my hands there, too. <sighs> Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. That's our citizen panel for this week. Uh, we will uh, see them all, all of you here again on Monday when we do the pop-up show. And uh, don't forget that Amy Manuel is next with the intersection. You can call her on Skype at GabNet Live, at GabNet Live. Uh, we'll be back here again also here next Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.